Okay. All right, pleased to be joined at this time by Coach Gilbert, the head of women's basketball coach at Spalding High School, state championship winning coach. Coach, thank you so much for taking your time to join me today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Excited to hear about what you guys do. You know, we, we started this, um, this whatever it is now for me, the little side business, uh, to help coaches of all sports. And, and I really feel like this culture piece especially is, is one that's true for all sports, all genders, you know, all the things we're talking about. So I know when I was a head football coach, I could learn a lot from a, a successful cross-country coach, a successful uh, women's basketball coach, anything like that. So really excited to hear what you got to say. But before we get started, uh, tell anybody listening about this. We got some people listening live, and then we'll have way more listening on the replay. Tell um, tell them a little bit about you, how you got your start, and then how you how you got to where you are today. All right. Um, I'm from Griffin. Um, I graduated from Griffin High School, and from there I was a student athlete. I played at Savannah State for a year. In the last three years, I played at Carson Newman, a private school in um, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And actually, I started coaching um, my senior year in high school. Um, I coached my sister's rec team, so I had some experience. And from there on, I knew I wanted to coach. So I had an opportunity to come home and coach from uh, for a local AU team uh, with one of my assistant coaches, as a matter of fact, that started a program in Griffin. And um, from there on, um, I, I coached um, at Spalding High School. I was an assistant for two years, and from, I left, and I was a head middle school coach for two years. And I've been at Spalding High School for the last five years, so that's kind of a, a background of my coaching coaching experience. So. Now, tell them a minute, because I know you ain't gonna, you're not going to want to brag on yourself, so I'm going to have to make it. <laughs> so tell, tell anybody listening to this that's not from Georgia or maybe not familiar with your school, how what what all have you all accomplished the last five years? Um, the last five years, the first year, um, my first year as a head coach, we um made the state tournament, the playoff for the first time in six years. Um, and we played um the first round versus Americas. Um, that second year we went to the Elite Eight. Um. And we lost to Columbus. So we lost to Americas the first year, which they ended up winning it. The um, state that year, the second year we lost to Columbus, and they ended up winning um, that year. And we knew we were close. And that following year, the third year, that's when we um, accomplished our goals by winning the state championship. And we played Henry County. And the next year, we went back to the championship. We lost to, um, against Carver Columbus, um, which we had beaten the year before in the Final Four. And this past year, we lost to Americas again in the Elite Eight, and they ended up winning uh, the 4A state championship. So, I mean, that's what, you know, that's what I wanted people to hear that didn't know as they listened forward. You know, here's a, a, a person who took over as a coach five years ago, and, you know, four of those five years basically in the final eight, uh, one state championship, one runner-up. Uh, Coach, you should be proud. Before we even get started, you should be really proud of that. You know, I coached a long time. I didn't have I didn't have near that success. So, um, <laughs> congratulations you. to you. That that's really really cool. Um, Thank but obviously, y'all y'all see what I like to hear about that. You did it with more than one group of kids too, because when you're doing that four consecutive years, you're doing it with a few different groups of kids. Sometimes people can win when they get really really you know the right mix of a great group and they can win. But to build this culture. We're talking about doing it over an extended period of time. And so um, that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, what we came up with in studying places that have great culture, and yours is one of them, we felt like they have all these things. There's at least a plan in place for all these things. Now, you don't have to be the same, it doesn't have to be the same plan as everybody else, but they have a plan, a detailed culture, a way they do things in each one of these. So, I'm going to ask you about each one of them for a minute, but what do you guys do at Spalding to, to help player develop? Uh, first, I think it starts, um, it, it definitely starts in the preseason and in the summer workouts, you know. You know, it's not going to start automatically, you know, we're not going to, you know, we're lucky to have kids that, you know, have the skills, but as far as developing, you know, we just grind it out, you know. We take time in um, developing our guards and posts. Um, I do things where 
I have a, my post my post coach and my guard coach. We split up. Um, they focus on more of the post, and the guard coach will focus more on the guard. So, and during that, so they um, we focus on their um, their post and guard work. So, and during that time, I have opportunity for them to switch, and so where everyone can you know learn and develop some of the same skills. So we just grind it out. Yeah, work. <laughs> uh do your girl do does your team lift during the year all year part of the year what do you guys do with the as far as the weight room goes as far as the weight room we uh we do lift it in summertime um and i have opportunity at my school where we i can um get my girls because i coach pe at the high school and i have opportunity for my girls to um get into a weight training class this past year, um, they um, let the weight train coach um, work them out. But in the past, it was me um, in that weight training class. So we, for the first semester, we do lift. Did you feel like that's one of the things that gives you all an advantage a little bit, uh, having them all in the class and being in PE with them? Oh, yeah, because it builds, like, the camaraderie. The girls are always around each other. And it gives me an opportunity, you know, to build a better, a closer relationship with them. And just, you know, I it's a time that we can watch film and stuff. So that's a, yeah. a huge Absolutely. advantage. <laughs> Absolutely. When um, every sport's a little different on this next one because you have different number of coaches. But in basketball, you guys probably only have a few assistants compared to football. but what is your plan for developing coaches, even yourself, include yourself in that? What do you all do all year for staff development to make yourselves better uh, as coaches? Um, the first thing I just think about, you know, everyone being on the same page, um, letting my assistant know, assistants know my expectations, you know, let them know what we're going to work on, what I'm looking for. Um, and just by just – using each other ideas, you know, getting better because, you know, it, of course I'm learning and I'm learning from the coach beside me, you know, it's just a circle. We just, a, we have a good, I have a good group of um, assistant coaches and we just share ideas. Uh, I'm not the type of coach, <laughs> it's it's my way or the highway. I am very open for right. my assistant coaches and I'm always learning from them. Awesome. Awesome answer. Um, what about with parents? And, and, you know, when I say parents, I think that can go a lot of different ways with some coaches or they hear that a different way. I mean working with parents, meaning some of the stuff you all have to do for fundraising, but also when they do have a problem and there is an issue, which there inevitably always is, what is yeah. the culture, <laughs> what's, what, what's the culture at Spalding that you try to create on how we're going to deal with Booster Club parents, things like that? Um, in the beginning, I always have a parent um, meet it, and I tell them I have an open line of communication. You know, anytime you have a problem, um, after practice, I'm always there. And um, my cell phone, I give them my cell phone. You know, whenever it's a problem, if it's a problem that I know I have to solve, more than likely I will contact. In the past, I've contacted the coach, and we, you know, set up a meeting, you know, to solve like the problem, whatever issue that we're having. Mm -hmm. No, and that's, I think that being preemptive on that is always big, you know, just going and helping out. Because one thing I hope people are listening, get out of that part was here's a team that for six years in a row didn't make the playoffs. They get a new coach. They go to the final eight, four years in a row. Do y'all still have problems? Oh, you yeah. Know? Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. but, you know what I'm asking that because some people are, <laughs> some people are struggling with their team right now. Some people are watching mm -hmm. this. And they're struggling with their team right now. And they probably think, if I could just be like Coach Gilbert, I would have no problems. Parents would love me. It doesn't work like that. Even the teams know. that win every game, it just doesn't work like that. Uh, and so, you know, you've got to have a plan for that and be preemptive, meaning say as many things in your parent meeting, be ahead of things. And that doesn't matter if you're undefeated or if you lost every game. you still got to have a plan for that. And, and I think people miss out on that sometimes, focusing on, you know, thinking that if they could win, that they wouldn't have these problems. And the truth is, you know, I could tell a ton of stories, not going to waste y'all's time, on <laughs> times where we won. And I, I thought, man, I've done a great job. I was patting myself on the back. And somebody was right there <laughs> ready to remind me that I did. <laughs> <laughs> always, <laughs> yeah, always. Yeah, always. 
So I just think of um, just keeping a, a clear line of communication, just continuing, um, just letting the not only the players but the parents knowing you like knowing your expectations. Right. Like, yeah. Going to tolerate what you're not going to tolerate. Yeah, and just being honest. I mean, I can tell just talking to you pretty upfront and honest with folks. And there's no reason to hide some of that stuff. Just say yeah. what you expect and hold them to that. What about when you guys practice, Coach? What is What happens at your practice that maybe you think separates you from other teams or or you think is something you do that really helps create that culture that helps you win on Tuesday and Fridays? Um, just creating a um, competitive culture in my practices. That that's the you know that was the big thing that you know that myself and my coaches we wanted to create a competitive and hardworking um, culture. So my practices in the past I've had um, fast um, athletes. So I like to play fast paced. So my practices are fast paced. Everything is on time. So. Once the drill is up, we're heading to the next drill on the hop. So that's something that um, I'm, I'm huge on, just time management, um, just creating a competitive and fast-paced um, practice. Awesome. And I think it carries on to the game because, you know, if you practice fast, you're going to play fast. Absolutely. No doubt. Um what about your game day routine? Maybe what you do with your players or even just how you guys handle the game days at the school. Is there anything unique about spotting that you think really helps you all uh, and have success? Um, I know this past year, we have a, a class that is kind of like an advisement class and my um, assistant principal allows me to, you know, get the girls during that time. We, you know, conduct a shoot around and that's something we do every game day. We do it during that time and, um, after school, my kids know I have a routine. So after school, we, we're eating pregame meals, you know, we're shooting free throws afterwards, um, handing out jerseys. They just know. I just try to build that, um, like, that culture during, like, during the week for practice, you know, just right. building that camaraderie, just that routine, keeping the kids on routine. I think that's huge because once they get out of routine, you know, yeah, absolutely. sometimes kids don't adjust. <laughs> absolutely. Um so, Coach, you got these kids and, and they're winning the state championship or they're making it to the third, fourth round of the playoffs uh, and they're playing on the varsity. What about the people that aren't on the varsity? What is how, – how does a young lady go from, you know, your a middle schooler or something like that into being a starter for your team? They um, – my kids know – once they come in, they know I am huge on, you know, defense and just work, their work ethic. If you have a great work ethic, I'm, you know, you're going to eventually move up. And everybody's not going to start from the top, you know. I, you know, I have to reiterate that, you know, start your way from the bottom and continue to work, your, you know, work yourself up the ladder. Um, I do have – I allow my girls to, JV girls to, you know, practice with the varsity and travel with the varsity. So, you know, they can kind of build, you know, build, get a, you know, with what what we do on the varsity level. Right. Um, no, I think that's big. I mean, I just, I think across sports, the places who have won and won over and over and over again, not just won one time, have uh, put emphasis on their sub-varsity programs. And, there's at least every place is a little different on how they can do it because, you know, depending on how, what your relationship is with how you work with middle schools or whatever, but everybody has a system in place for moving those uh, players from one level to the next. Uh, because like I said, what's most impressive for me about what you all have done is you've been doing it four years in a row, you know, four years in a row deep in the playoffs in Georgia where it's very competitive and our, that classification you're in is very competitive. There's a lot of good teams in it. And, um, you're, so you're having to do it with a lot of different types of kids is what I'm saying. It's not just you got one good guard and it took you to the Elite Eight one time, which is what happens a lot. But you yeah. guys are having to do it over and over again. So you have to be developing those JV kids. Uh, people have to be working with them at the middle school level. Um, there's just no other way around. Yeah. Coach, what, what are y'all looking for for a leader on your team? I know the best teams always have a leader. So yeah. what, what, what traits do you think make a good leader for a girls basketball team? Um, as far as for me, I'm looking for a kid that's, you know, going to have, you know, that integrity, um, that's going to always work ethic. I, I'm never going to have to question their work ethic. You know, they're, they're going to be verbal, you know, 
And that can also be verbal by, I mean, nonverbal by just leading the team, you know, just, you know, some people just lead without being, you know, not being mm -hmm. vocal, but um, just someone that the kids look up that, you know, always doing right in a classroom also. And, you know, just on the court, just, just overall good person. And the leader on the team, you know, it, it on my team, it doesn't always have to be the, the um, leading scorer. So I'm looking for, you know, that hardworking kid that, you know, just can make a difference, just being positive. Absolutely. Uh, we talked about assist. These are kind of traits we, we uh, identified over the years of places that have winning cultures. And we talked about assistant coaches. We talked about some varsity teams. What about a sense of urgency? We felt like when we talked more and more to different people at different sports, the places that won year in, year out, there was a sense of urgency, like an, an intensity level that they had. How do you work to instill a sense of urgency in your team? Um, I think it's just my intense. Um, I, I'm very intense during practice. Um, we just, uh, I know myself and my assistant coach, we are very competitive. We, you know, we hate losing. And just our just intense, you know, being intense in practice, just I think that carries on. I think that builds a culture of, you know, our sense of urgency, you know, setting goals, what, you know, what we're aiming for. Just throughout the season, um, I think I think that plays a huge part um, in my program. Absolutely, Coach. What last question I got on these traits? What uh, is there anything you all do to reward or award players for different things? Y'all have any kind of things you all do, like just among yourselves, or you do publicly, that would just to kind of reward kids that take charges, or I don't know, whatever it is. Uh, is there anything you all do that you think is different? I know in the beginning, um, the very first week of practice, I know we um, do a one-on-one. -on -one, um, we meet with each kid individually, and we just let them know our expectations, you know, what we're looking for. Um, and we're always praising the um, in practices in locker rooms. So that's something that, you know, that we do. Absolutely. Because I think nowadays, you know, with kids, they just don't have the same level of confidence that they yeah. may have had 20, 30 years ago. Even if even if they're acting like they do, the truth mm -hmm. is they really don't. Yeah. And so, you know, the best teams have ways. Even if it's informal, sounds like yours a little more informal. I think there's nothing wrong with that. Formal or informal ways to praise these kids and promote the good things they're doing. Uh, nowadays, it's just kind of part of it. Doesn't matter if it's soccer, softball, basketball, football, doesn't matter. Yeah, uh, anything that I see on social media, I always try to post, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Get them out there. Yeah, I mean, I don't even like – you wouldn't know it by following me, but I don't even like social media all that much. I just know the kind of uh, influence it can have to help. If I try to use my, my stuff as a platform for something positive, but, it, you know, you can do that. If When I was coaching, that was all I would do. I was constantly putting stuff out there because that's how kids see it now. It just is – got to meet them where they are, you know, and yeah. um, that's yeah, part of it. <laughs> Uh, so you've had a real good run of success, Coach, and, and, and for the first five years, I don't know if you could have asked for any, uh, you know, any much better success than what you've had, but what is something maybe that along the way you thought, well, if I had to do over again, I would have done this different? Um, I don't think um, I regret anything because, you know, every mistake you learn from it and you get better Absolutely. as a coach. So I don't regret anything. Um, I thank God, you know, placed me here for a reason, you know, and I'm just trying to, you know, it, you know, just give out my knowledge to the um, kids and try to be a role model for them. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. What, uh, what advice would you have for somebody that's listening to this that maybe is an assistant girls basketball coach somewhere and aspires to be like you one day? What's something you would tell them they might need to be working on now so when their time comes they'll, they'll be ready? Um, my biggest thing just building a relationship with the kids, you know, just um I think once you build a relationship with the kids, I think the kids uh, you know, uh, you know, they'll respect you and I think they'll, you know, want to play hard and do whatever they can for you. Um I just to, you know, have that winning culture, it's not gonna happen, you know, automatically. You're gonna have to work and develop it, you know, and it's not gonna happen maybe in one year, but you just gotta, you know, work and continue to grind. Um Continue to talk to other coaches um, to get different ideas, you know, just build relationships 
with other coaches? Absolutely, absolutely. Good answer, Coach. Everything comes down to basically uh, relationships, communication, and the presentation. I've learned in my days as AD and the district AD and now I'm the HR director. It didn't matter what job it was. Uh, the people who built relationships, the people who communicated well, and the people who could present their message and deliver it to people uh, in the way they intended always succeeded. And so it's obvious you were able to do those things. Uh, I really appreciate you. If any guys got listening, got questions, you can ask them in the chat, and I can uh, I can ask Coach if we need to. Uh, but I, you know, I personally want to thank you because it's a uh, it's important for us to hear from all the different sports. Uh, I think across gender, I don't think any of this stuff is different. I think it is what it is. You know, we talk about press defense another time, or we might can talk about how you would handle a male athlete versus a female athlete. There might be some differences in the how you would handle, but the truth of this stuff of communicating, building relationships, all that is going to be the same. And uh, it's very important that people hear that and see that uh, from people who've won a lot like you have. Uh, so I appreciate you joining me. No, like nobody got a question. You did a great job explaining. And uh, if I can help you in any way, let me know. And um, look forward to talking to you again sometime, maybe. Thank you for having me. This is something different for me, and I'm glad that I um, participated. Thank you, Coach. Yeah, absolutely. Thank, take care, Coach. We'll see you. All right, see you.